Welcome to Tech Wednesdays. And no, I'm not just watching videos about myself. I got an email from Meg at Corporate Communications inside of Dell, who said, I saw all your plastic surgery videos. You look great. She said, would you like to test our new prototype pre-production Dell Precision 5750 17-inch workstation? And I said, absolutely. So instead of me blabbering about, take a look at this thing. Now before I start rambling about the hardware design, I need to explain mobile workstations. This is a question I get all of the time. These laptops are designed to augment or replace your tower or your large desktop that you have and to be able to go on the road with it. It is for a subset of power users like engineers, developers, designers, IT, video editors like myself or gamers. I don't have to be tied to this desk. I hate it. I can take it into the bathroom and sit on the bidet and continue editing. I can go to Arby's and throw down a five for five. I don't have to do any transcoding. I don't have to do any proxy files because the hardware in here is that of a desktop or a tower workstation. Now, of course, there are trade-offs of all of that. Now, to make this all work, Dell's engineers had to come up with a new thermal design, something you don't see on any other laptop. And again, this is part of all the work that has to go into making things smaller. So two things, dual opposite outlet fans and a vapor chamber. Most laptops, including Dell's, HP's, the MacBook Pros, they all use heat pipes with traditional fans. They pull heat away, pull cool air in, and try to blow as much hot air out as possible. Now, when you have components all over the place, you have this uneven temperature that you get. So creating the vapor chamber is able to pull the hot air away more evenly and getting that last 10% of the heat out that you couldn't do otherwise. So what you get is smoother, more consistent temperatures, which is, allows them to keep the voltage higher on the GPU, the CPU, and those clock speeds or the speed of those chips can run way higher for longer periods of time with this cooling. Now, is it as good as a desktop? No. Is it as good as the bigger 7000 series laptops? No, but it's far more effective than their previous generation or pretty much anything that's come out at this point. Now, because this is a pre-production prototype, I was asked not to publish any benchmarks on it, which makes sense because it's shipped to me in Windows 10 test mode. The drivers are not finalized for this. However, the full production model will be out in sometime in June of 2020, so you'll see all the results then. But I did use it for what I typically run, and that is heavy encoding, decoding, and Call of Duty multiplayer. So let's talk about Adobe Premiere. I use 10-bit 4K files, which are very resource intensive. And on the 5750, I did not have to do any transcoding or proxy files to edit in this, which is huge for me because it's one extra step. I was able to work with the files completely normal, I could scrub them, I could edit it, there was no lag delay, but of course you have to have the power supply plugged in. Like most of these laptops, you need full power to it the entire time, and it was a very smooth, seamless experience. Now, bigger projects that I loaded, where there was a lot of color correction or After Effects work, any 3D stuff, it's nowhere near as fast as my 7000 laptop, 7000 series laptop, and why would it be? That has a much faster GPU, higher clock speeds. But the interesting part, the precision, compared to the XPS, is you get Xeon processor options. You get ECC RAM, you get the RTX chipset, and you get the real enterprise support with pro support, which is in region for up to five years. So this is what you would want if you were really using it for business purposes. That way you don't ever have to worry about downtime. Now let's talk about ports for a second because this is where it disappointed me, which makes sense because to shrink down the form factor, you lose some things. Now, much like the MacBook Pro, it almost looks identical in terms of ports. You have four USB-C or Thunderbolt ports, this adds an SD card reader and a headphone jack, which is great, but then you use something like this. In professional sense, the X-Rite color meter, which Dell's premier color display supports, it's got USB, which means I have to use a dongle for everything. I have to use a dongle for RJ45, 
HDMI out, any display out for that matter, or this or a mouse, which requires me either to have that or to have a dock with me all the time. And that is just so annoying. So basically, if you're somebody that loves just using a touchpad or the trackpad, which is really good on here, I, I don't know how anybody does it, but I always need a mouse connected. So that means I have to have one more accessory. On the business side, I think it's worse than if you're an XPS 17 owner. It's less of an issue there. Now, in terms of docking solution, you have your Thunderbolt uh, dock, which I have the powerful one for the larger 7000 series laptop, or you can go for the lower wattage. But I will say you probably want the higher wattage version if you're doing constant gaming or where that GPU is always running. It's going to be hungry for that power. Now, in other hardware talk, I had to set this next to a MacBook Pro. That's the gold standard in laptop hardware. It's one of the best in the world. So when you open up the lids on both of the machines, you look at them and you think, well, there are some similarities here, like the power button on the Dell and the fingerprint reader is in the same place. The upward facing speakers look almost identical. Now, granted, Dell has done this in the past on their latitudes and precision, but it is, there is some similarities for sure. But that's mostly where it ends, because if you look at the edge work, the chassis work in the aluminum, the diamond cutting on the bevels and the edges, it has a lot more design detail. Now, granted, it doesn't feel as soft. The MacBook Pro rounds almost all its edges, and it just has this softer feel to the touch. But in terms of the body structure, the Dell is far more rigid. There's almost zero deflection in the laptop lid when you compare them side by side. The body is just so solid on the Precision or the XPS 17 that this is one of the main reasons why you buy it is the, the mechanical engineering that went into the case, the chassis feels great. The palm rest is solid, it's all carbon fiber. The keys are pretty solid. I mean, they feel like standard laptop keys. There's not too much deflection in them. There's no bending or twisting in the keyboard. And the, the palm rest and touchpad is one of the better Dell solutions ever. Is it as good as the trackpad or touchpad on the Mac? I don't know, you could argue that because the drivers are so different between the Apple software and Windows 10. But granted, if you're a Mac person and you're doing audio design, you're probably gonna choose a Mac. But if you need a workstation with Quadro graphics, you need Xeon processors, ECC memory, and the added power that the Intel chipset gives you in the Dell machine for like video and the stuff I talked about at the beginning, the new precision is far superior in almost every single way, right down to the display and even have a touch option on the Dell for touch, you know, using it, that which would be great for like scaling 3D models, but I mean, I would never use it personally. But it's one of those extra details that you get there. Now the last component is software, which is specific to the Precision lineup and not available on the XPS. And a lot of this is because it's a business class device. So they're adding user selectable thermal tables now in the BIOS. And the way they did it before, it was kind of managed in Dell Power Manager where you could select between quiet, balanced, or high performance. And if you have an IT department that doesn't know what they're doing, you could have this $5,000 machine fully loaded and you could have the thermal table in quiet and you wouldn't get the full power of the, the machine. So it's kind of a waste. So it's one of those hidden things that you have to know. Dell has now consolidated their Dell Optimizer software. So it will use machine learning by default to optimize your application. So if you're using things like Maya, CAD, Adobe After Effects, it will start to tailor your experience and it knows your, your GPU usage, your CPU usage, and it will start to change and modify the settings of the hardware at you know a BIOS level as well to ramp up fan speed when you need it and it knows what you use and then to turn it all down when you need it as well. So the software's gotten a lot smarter. It's a lot more stable. This is clearly for somebody that is a power user or somebody that is deploying this in an IT or a large scale environment. That's all the tools you want and why you would choose the Precision over the XPS along with the improved hardware. But you know, I can ramble on about this forever. It's about usage cases. I will choose the 7000 series, the biggest laptop possible because I get the thermal capacity, the higher speeds of the GPUs and CPUs all the time, there's less throttling, but I'm not like everybody. If you're somebody that needs to travel a lot more than I do, this makes a lot more sense. You can put it in a backpack, you can set it on your lap or carry it around without getting a neck ache. You're not gonna have as much cumbersome moving things around. The power supply is smaller, all of that, and that's why you would get this. It's still crazy fast, and most of the people that I know that are doing video editing are can do everything on here without any transcoding. It's, it's really great for that. 
But I hope this video is helpful. And now that I have some access to Dell equipment, things that apply to me where I think it can help people that are watching, I'm gonna to continue to do videos on. So if you have any ideas of stuff you'd like to see, let me know. See you next video.